before I get to the boat, I want to share with you something that's been on my mind. Let me read you a quote out of this book. It's from Marcus Aurelius. It's not death that man should fear, but he should fear never beginning to live. Now, why do I read you this quote whenever I'm trying to show you a boat? I want to tell you a quick story. A friend of mine who is a boat broker, he had a client who waited till he was retired to purchase a boat. So at, I think it was age 65, he comes into the office, I'm gonna buy this boat, he gets a boat. A year later, this man's children come into the shop. I need to talk to the boat broker, we actually need to sell the boat. The broker, like, why, you guys just bought it a year ago. Well, their dad had passed away, this gentleman who had bought the boat had passed away within that year and never really got to enjoy the boat. What's the point of that is that you cannot wait if you keep thinking, I'm gonna wait till I retire, I gotta wait till I'm done with this next job. If you want something, do it. Do not wait until the magical age or the magical retirement, do it. And, and, and I bring that up because it, it sort of hits home to me right now personally. Since January, in what is it, five months, I've had three close uh, mentor friends pass away. Those all, all those people were were older gentlemen. Life is fragile. Life is short. And if you want something, go do it. I made it to the boat yard and I wanted to explain to you kind of the boat buying process step by step. First, you're obviously going to start searching, right? I, I went online to Yacht World, Craigslist, some of the local sites. Now, I'm in Annapolis, Maryland, where it happens to be, I guess it's like the sailing capital of the U.S. Boats are everywhere. Boat yards like this are everywhere. Boats are on these stilts where you can get really good bargain prices because sometimes owners haven't used these boats in a few years and they're, they're just sitting here and they want to get rid of them. So that's a good way to find a bargain boat. I found one, a couple that I liked that I looked at and then I went to a boat broker because I found one online that was listed through a boat broker, kind of like a real estate agent. And I was able to meet with him and check out the boat, which is the boat we're here to see right now, the boat that I actually purchased. Let's go check her out. Well, here's the new boat, y'all. This is a 1985 Beneteau First 38. So as to kind of complete what I was saying about the process, first is the searching, going and looking at boats, and then the second process is the survey. You may have seen other channels talking about their experience with the survey. I did the same thing with this boat. First of all, the survey is quite expensive, so you want to make sure it's the boat you pretty much want before you go ahead and commit to the survey. The survey is like an inspection of the entire boat. You hire a professional surveyor, charges by the foot. So my boat, 38 feet, 20, I think it was like tw between 20 and 25 dollars per foot. So mine was a little over 700 dollars just to do the survey inspection. The surveyor goes throughout the entire boat, knocks on the hull with a hammer, does all kinds of inspection to make sure everything is solid, wants to make sure the insides and outs is good to go. You put it in the water, that's, a, that's another expense right there. You gotta pay to put the boat in the water if it's already up on the stands. Uh, you do a test with the engine, sails, and everything else. Then if it's good to go, you, you make note of things that are not so good and then you use those to negotiate down the price so in, in this case I did negotiate a little down on the price uh, I was able to get a few thousand dollars off it was actually already very reasonably priced 
at $38,000 listed. I got it under $30,000. So I was very happy with the final price. I've still got some work to do before I'm gonna put it in the water, but I'm very excited about this boat. Let's climb aboard. Let's check out the deck here. And I wanna note that the reason I went ahead with the full disclosure of the boat price was really just to emphasize for those of you who might be interested in this kind of thing, that it is attainable, it's not overly expensive, especially if you shop around for a good used boat. Now, a new boat would have cost over $200,000 if you're talking about the same size Beneteau. Back to the cockpit area. Let's go below deck and check out the salon area. One of the other reasons I like this boat is that it has kind of more modern lines. I think that's more of the European design. Even though it's 1985, it still has kind of a modern look. Here is the nav station. Let's move on forward to the V-berth. Let's look at the forward head. And then we'll turn right back around and go back to the galley. And then to the port side aft cabin. It also has a second head right here, which is next to the engine. It's a Perkins 4108 for those of you interested in diesel engines. And finally, the starboard side aft cabin. It is hot as anything up in here, so I wanna keep this brief. I wanna just give you a quick background. The um, owners that had this before me, it was actually the original owners. They're a local couple here in Annapolis. Now they're probably close to 90 years old, but they bought this in 1985, had it brought over from France, had it outfitted. Uh, they did uh, a lot of maintenance, you know, they did the upkeep and they kept everything pretty well up to date, except, you know, certain things I need to really upgrade, like electronics, some of the uh, uh, pipes, plumbing. But it's, I think it's a great boat. I'm excited to share the projects with you in the next couple of months. I'm gonna have it on the hard now for probably another couple of months. And then in the fall, I've got a big adventure planned with this boat, which I'm, I'm still in the works of planning. So I'm excited to share that with you. For now, kind of to keep it in this theme of, of, of live life to the fullest, I'm gonna leave you with some Alan Watts voiceover, but I'm gonna also leave you with some footage. I just peeked my head out of the boat and I saw a uh, sailboat race going on here in the bay. There's also the Pride of Baltimore, a big sailing schooner, uh, old fashioned, uh, an old fashioned sailing schooner out in the bay and there's a big sailboat race going on right next to it. So I wanna do some drone footage of that while we listen to some inspirational Alan Watts. So thanks for watching. Actually, uh, next week I'm going to Italy and I'm hoping to do some travel vlogging. I think we're gonna do some good stuff with this channel. Part sailing, part travel. If you like the sailing, watch the sailing stuff. If you're into the travel, travel, whatever. Uh, yeah. Help me help you. Anyway, thanks for watching. What makes you itch? What sort of a situation would you like? Let's suppose I do this often in vocational guidance of students. They come to me and say, well, uh, we're getting out of college and we haven't the faintest idea what we want to do. So I always ask the question, what would you like to do if money were no object? What, how would you really enjoy spending your life? Well, it's so amazing as a result of our kind of educational system, crowds of students say, well, we'd like to be painters, we'd like to be poets, we'd like to be writers, but as everybody knows, you can't earn any money that way. Or another person says, well, I'd like to live an out-of-doors life and ride horses. I say, do you want to teach in a riding school? Uh, let's go through with it. What do you want to do? When we finally got down to something which the individual says he really wants to do, I will say to him, you do that and uh, forget the money. Uh, because if you say that getting the money is the most important thing, you will spend your life completely wasting your time. You'll be doing things you don't like doing in order to go on living, that is to go on doing things you don't like doing, which is stupid. Better to have a short life that is full of what you like doing than a long life spent in a miserable way. And after all, if you do really like what you're doing, it doesn't matter what it is, 
you can eventually turn it, uh, you could eventually become a master of it. It's the only way to become a master of something, to be really with it. And then you'll be able to get a good fee for whatever it is. So uh, don't, don't worry too much. That, that's, uh, everybody's, uh, somebody's interested in everything. And anything you can be interested in, you'll find others in. But it's absolutely stupid to spend your time doing things you don't like in order to go on spending things you don't like and doing things you don't like and to teach your children to follow in the same track. And so, therefore, it's so important to consider this question, what do I desire?